at 70 Four percent of the vote to become the new senator from the 15th district. He won a tough primary, and uh, now he will be ready to be sworn in come the uh, next calendar year. Tom, good morning. Thanks so much for calling in, sir. Good morning, Rob. Good morning, everyone. How was everybody? Great, We're thank great. you. When when will Excellent. the actual swearing in for you be? Do you know that much yet? You know, I, I think you need a top secret clearance to find that out. I've been <laughs> asking, and nobody seems to know the answer. So. I've heard uh, early December, and I've heard January. So um, I don't know. My parents are hoping to find out so they can make hotel reservations. So if you find out, let me know. I will do my best to search that one out for you. I know because it's a new governor, it's a February legislative session this year instead of January. But I do believe you guys gavel in for a day in January just to make sure everybody's sworn in. I think that's right. But um, I have not heard a date yet, Rob. So we're, we're waiting to hear. Okay. Well, I, I, yeah, I think it's early January when everybody comes back together. I believe, though, there's provision if there is a vacancy, you could be sworn in earlier. Correct. For example, if Greg Blair <clears throat> fills in for the governor, if the governor moved on to uh, uh, to the Senate, it, that, that scenario has been played out. If should that happen, then, Tom, you could be sworn in earlier. Yes. We'll keep you posted. <laughs> Sounds good. Well, Sounds we find good. out, yeah. Yeah, try to give me at least 12 hours' notice, please. Hey, I'm seeing uh, advertisements for the Potomac Eagle Railroad. I, I saw it during uh, something I was watching over the weekend on uh, D.C. television, and I just got an email there doing a big uh, Christmas thing. You did some work as part of your, uh, as a lawyer, I think you did some work for the Potomac Eagle Railroad, uh, Tom, and that was part of your campaign as well were some of the issues that were going on up there. Am I right about that? I didn't do any work for, for Potomac Eagle as an attorney. Uh, it did come up as an issue during the primary. Gotcha. Um, but that's, that's one of our major businesses here in the eastern panhandle, and it's a, you know somewhere around 45,000 uh, visitors per year come over to Hampshire County and the eastern panhandle to ride the railroad and enjoy the eagles and the fall foliage and the Christmas show. Um, so it, it's an important business. It's one I definitely want to support. And, um, you know, they have this new – arrangement with Omnitracks that that bought the railroad and the issue during the primary was that there was no there was no auction there was no bid process it was you know it, it seemed like a you know kind of a deal that got done without real much public input um so anyway one of my one of my objectives is just to make sure you know we protect that asset for the eastern panhandle and keep driving in the tourists um that are important not just for the railroad but also for you know, the gas stations, the restaurants, the coffee shops, um, you know, in Hampshire County and the Eastern Panhandle. So, so Tom, what uh, what committees are you angling for? What would you like to serve on? Um, uh, what do you think are the possibilities? Well, that's a good question. And it's, and the the, uh, the whole Game of Thrones and the uh, West Virginia Senate, I, you, you could really do a reality TV show on <laughs> on, uh, on that one and the, the phone calls and texts that you uh, that you get. Um, but I think that the I don't have a strong you know preference honestly. I just want to serve as best as I can. But I, the 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 talks that I've heard would be to leverage my business experience um, on possibly the economic development committee or my legal background uh, on judiciary, and those those two seem to be the most natural fits. Bill, Tom, the uh, our local le legislators are really uh, against the Department of Highways recently. Uh, will you join that course in, for one thing, trying to get the Burlington Station or Burlington office moved to uh, the eastern Berkeley County or at least have a satellite in Berkeley County? Yeah, I think that um, that's one thing that I, I talked about during the campaign and you know, we really need to bring together now is, is to pull uh, all of our eastern panhandle delegation together and really advocate for the interests, you know, that that are for the Eastern Panhandle. I think that it's it's sort of a cliche that you know Charleston has ignored us, and um, you know now now that you know we're, we're just such a driver for the the tax base and the population base, um, we just can't be ignored any longer. And so, you know, it's not just not just the the Department of Highways bill, but you know, I, I think we need more state police up here. I think we need more uh, fair share of our uh, counter drug money up here, especially in the more rural area areas like Morgan and Hampshire, you know, that are forgotten sometimes. So across the board, um, I think there needs to be a gravitational pool, you know, for, for resources and attention and planning and permitting um, for the Eastern Panhandle. 
taking that one step farther, there's been some suggestion or some hope, I should say, that of the 6% uh, sales tax that goes to Charleston, we're able to keep, say, 1% or 2% in the eastern panhandle or the local counties. Is this something that you would advocate for? So, yeah, I think that's uh, kind of the, going back to the home rule issue. It, it doesn't really make sense to me logically why the municipalities uh, have that ability to you know, levy the 1% tax and the counties don't. Um, I, you know, for me personally, I'm a, I'm a low tax uh, fiscal conservative guy. So uh, it's not something that, you know, I would push uh, personally to raise taxes. But um, if, it's, if it's something that the voters wanted to vote for, you know, like a, a local referendum, um, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't stand in the way of that. You know, I do think that uh, there are some things that you know, we need in, in uh, Berkeley County especially, and, and I'm thinking in particular of, uh, you know, just the, some parks and recs facilities because um, we, we have some incredible sports teams in the area, but unfortunately, you know, our kids have to travel to Pennsylvania or, you know, Virginia, other states. Um, and so it would be really nice to have, uh, you know, really nice uh, sports complex with soccer fields and volleyball uh, courts and that sort of thing. Of course, that costs money, you know, and, you know, Bridgeport did it successfully by by uh, raising you know raising a bond and and uh, built a fifty million dollar facility. Um, so these are conversations I'm having with uh, ongoing and have had and will continue to have with the with the county council here in Berkeley. And um, uh, so you know I'm I'm not opposed to it, but I wouldn't I would not impose my will on the taxpayers. But if if uh, you know there was a referendum where um, people wanted to impose on themselves. Uh, you know that that one percent tax. Um, I don't believe I'd be opposed to that. Yeah, I'm I'm all for letting the voters select whether they want to tax themselves or not. Yeah, that exactly right. But I, my question is a little bit different. Mine oh, no. was, you want to keep the one one percent of the six percent? Is exactly that even, right? Is that even possible? Rediverted. I don't know. I would think it would be. I, it's not constitutionally, so it would be possible by just a statute. Bill Mike Hornby behind you says yes. Yeah. I don't know if you heard the question, though. He might just be on sky high uh, <laughs> because Trump won yesterday. Uh, Tom, I've got 60 seconds left. Uh, give me a, a quick version of what else you'd like to do in the state. Well, I think that we've got to fight for the freedom issues. You know, some people call them social issues. I call them freedom issues. Those are, you know, the fighting for West Virginia family values, you know, keeping, keeping the boys out of girls' sports, giving parents uh, authority over medical decisions for their kids. And at the same time, we've got to chew gum and walk, and we, we've got to fight for the fiscal conservative issues. And, you know, if I'm going to be on a team, we're going to, we're going to play to win. And so I'm, I, I really i am going to drive and keep fighting until West Virginia is a top-10 state in, in business, climate, education, and infrastructure. All right, Tom, good to talk with you this morning, and congratulations once again. Congratulations, Tom. Congrats. Thanks a lot, guys. Talk to you yep. soon. Have a- have a great day. Bye-bye. You too. Tom Willis, appreciate him making some time for us this morning as well after he won convincingly over Anthony Murray, who we never did get a chance to interview. We had uh, twice uh, set things up with Anthony, and neither time uh, did it work out. That's life sometimes. This segment of our show brought to you by the Berkeley County Health Department's quick response team, the Brown Funeral.